Who's excited to be in church today? Is anybody? Come on, let's go. Yes, 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 I'm fired up for today. Worship really set the atmosphere, I believe, for what God wants to do in this place today. I believe he has a word for you today. I believe it's very, very special. I believe it's not an accident that you're here. I know Tiffany already mentioned this, but I think God has a word for you, a special word for you that it's, man, it's like the world is, is against us meeting at church because, because every Saturday night for the last couple of weeks, uh, like storming and windy and everything's coming down, but somehow we've retained power each week that uh, the storms have been going on. Can you just praise God one time? Because it's little stuff like that that makes a huge difference. We wouldn't have even had church at all. And so just for the small things, sometimes, well, it's not a very small thing. It's a big thing. But praising God. Praising God for the things when you notice, God, you, you helped me there. You supported me. You, you, you kept me safe. You were my shelter in the midst of the storm. Man, uh, today is going to be a good one. I, I just hope it's going to be a good one for me, so I hope you all enjoy it too. So my name is Elliot. My wife Tiffany and I, who was up here just a minute ago, we have the privilege of pastoring this group of people called Lifeline Church. We've got notes for you. They look just like this. They're like fill in the blanks. Uh, someone was handing them out to you as you were walking in. But we also have the YouVersion Bible app you can download and, and always follow along by hitting events and following uh, Lifeline Church on there. We would love it if you took advantage of that because there's some really good stuff. I want, there's a lot I want to teach you today. There's a lot I want to show you from the Word of God today. And it's helpful sometimes just to be able to remember what God spoke to you on a certain day. Because you can have a spiritual experience, man. You can be like, man, that was the best. That was such a good word. I loved it so much. And then two weeks goes by, be like, what was that about again? I forgot. But I can't even remember what I preached two weeks ago. So, I mean, come on. We are, forgiveness is stretched out. But um, these things are really helpful. And we, uh, we, we put them out there so that you could take advantage of them. Before we jump into the message today, I want to let you know about one really exciting thing. Next week is step one of Growth Track. Come on, get excited, somebody. <laughs> Woo! Maybe it's time for you. 23 and me is going to be a good thing. So that's like your prayer for yourself. 23, 2023 is going to be the year that I go all in. It's going to be the year that I really discover all that God has for me. I discover God's purpose for me. If that's your cry, if that's your prayer, hey, we've got something for you. It's called Growth Track. Growth Track is the way that you join the dream team and become um, like a the old way to say it would be like become a member, but we, we call it like we're on a team together. And man, I want to see exactly what God can do in, in my life in 2023. I got to just let you know, you will never have everything God has intended for you to have until you become a part, a, a member on the team, whatever you want to call it, until you become attached to a life-giving, your local church. Until you do that, you can come and have fun and enjoy the message, and, and we'll serve you for free. Like, we'll just do everything for you, and you can come as long as you want. But if you are looking for more, if you are looking for more to, to walk into to see what God wants to do in your life, I just want to let you know, next week, put it on your calendar, black, like put a big X on the ca- Next week is step one, come to Growth Track. Tiffany and I are going to lead that a little class. It doesn't last very long, about 45 minutes, and your kids can stay next door and get some childcare, and we will, we will break it down for you. We'll let you know exactly how this church works, everything, and all questions open. You can just ask us, and we'll talk to you about it, and you can start the process of being on this team. It's very simple. Uh, we like to make it very easy to be a part of this because we want what's best for you, and so if you're looking for that next week, have I hyped it up enough? All right, girl track next week. Get excited about it, okay? Now, we're in this series, week two, uh, called Refresh, and it's all from this, this passage right here. It's like a life verse for a lot of people. Proverbs 3 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. So for all you backseat drivers, chill, okay? Chill. Type A personality, that's me. Chill out. Hang on. Wait a second. Don't depend on your own understanding, but instead, seek his will in all you do. And it's a hard thing. The stronger personality you are, the harder this is to do. But to seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. That's a good promise. That really is a good promise. Who's ever been confused? Like, I wonder what I'm supposed to do next in life. I wonder what's next for me. I wonder what my purpose is. I wonder what God's plan is for me. If you've ever thought that way, guess what? Proverbs 3. It's perfect. All you got to do is trust the Lord. But we're, let's, talk that, let's talk that out because it's a process, and I want you to look to your neighbor and say, it's a process. Go ahead, tell him. It's a process. Now look to your second choice. 
Look to your second choice and say, it's a process. Man, that was dirty. I'm going to stop doing that, I think. Man, that's like promoting some, some disgruntled people. It is a process, though. It is a process. You ever wake up from a really good dream? Yeah, you ever just had a really, really good dream? And of course, you had to wake up. You had to wake up. But like, I'm thinking about, I was trying to think of like, what's like the best dream I ever had or that anybody's ever had, like, like swimming down a hot fudge Sunday river, just like backstroking, just like all, uh, rub it on my chest, oh, lick my hands. Too far? Too far? <laughs> how, about, how about flying? How about flying? You're like, ooh, I can see Lodi Lake. Ooh, I can see Lodi Lake. It's very nice. Oh, it's good. How about, uh, so I want to do something. This is a little interactive right here. If you've ever been woken up from a really good dream, like you've been having a really great dream, and then the power goes out, so your noise machine goes off, and so you wake up in the middle of the night. How long has it been since that happened to you? Last night? Perfect. Okay, so you're with me. What's the noise you make when you wake up from a really good dream? On the count of three, I want you to make that noise when you wake up from a really good dream, and you're, uh. on the count of three, what's the sound you make when you wake up from that dream? One, two, three. Oh, like, oh, you guys got it. That was the same thing. It's universal. I think it even crosses all the language barriers. That's the, ugh, oh, come on, you messed it up. I've heard about people having uh, recurring dreams. Anybody got, raise your hand if you got recurring dreams. Anybody got recurring? Y'all probably need a life group, actually. <laughs> and you got problems. <laughs> um, I'm just saying, uh, like, I-, I heard one. This one was super weird. Somebody said they had this one that, where they had this recurring dream where they're, they're spitting out their teeth. Has anyone ever had that one? No. You're weird, you're weird, you're weird, you're weird. You're, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's like spitting out your teeth. Ugh, so creeped out. I heard somebody that was like looking up weird dreams, and that's, that's probably the weirdest one I've ever heard of. Now, y'all definitely need a life group, man. You all need to stick together if you've ever had that dream. Now, so I want to talk to you about dreams today. Today is all about dreams, like God dreams, not pizza dreams. You ever had a pizza dream? Raise your hand if you had a pizza dream. You don't know what that is. Let me, expl- let me explain it to you. I'll explain to you what a pizza dream is. That's when you have, when you go to uh, someone's birthday, you know, at Love to Play, and you have like 16 slices of pepperoni pizza, and you know that prayer and fasting is starting, coming up real soon, so you're taking just slice after slice, and you're eating it, and you're eating it, and you're going to go to bed in 30 minutes, and you're just slamming pizza, piece after piece after piece, and then you go to bed, and there's like pink elephants flying around you. There's a cat riding a whale through the ocean, and you're just like thinking to yourself, well, not, not pizza dreams. Did, was that too visual? That was too visual, huh? I seen it online. Come on, you did too. It's all right. It's all right. Not a pizza dream. Not a pizza dream. When you dream up that crazy stuff and you think God is speaking to you, oh, God spoke to me about riding a whale through the ocean. I think it's my, I think it's my purpose. No, no, it's not. I need to make that clear. It's not. It's you guys on the same page? No, it's not. It's not. Uh, not pizza dream. I want to talk about God dreams. Let me define a God dream for you. A, a God dream goes a little something like this. A God dream is a, an unselfish desire or idea to make a difference, or as we would say, to be a lifeline in the world. When you have an unselfish idea or vision or just something that hits you and it's going to bless people, we call that a God. That's a God dream. That's a God dream, and we don't take those lightly at all. It's a dream that gives your life meaning beyond career. Amen, somebody? You're like, man, I've been looking for that for a while, right? Beyond career. Like, it doesn't matter what I do for money because I have a dream that I'm pursuing. Beyond career, beyond your status by changing the world around you. Now, there's, there's three people in the Bible I want to I wanna teach you about. So this is going to be, there's a lot I want to share with you today. I think like it, one insert couldn't handle it all, so it's going to get rough in here. But there's three people, there's three people I want to tell you about that uh, had dreams, and then, and then something happened, and, and I'll, I'll disclose that pretty soon. So first person is, his name Joseph. Joseph in the Old Testament in, in Genesis, uh, he's a major character in uh, the beginning of the nation of Israel and just our own faith. Uh, Joseph is a really important person. And Joseph was the second youngest brother uh, among many, many, many brothers. And so obviously he was disliked. That's just obvious, all right? Any younger brothers in the room, you know that he got picked on. He got picked on bad. But honestly, he was asking for it half the time. I'm gonna read it to you right now. Genesis 37, he said, one night Joseph had a dream. Everyone say dream. Dream. He had a dream. 
he had a dream. And when he told his brothers about it, they hated him more than ever. That's rough. You know, just tell somebody about a dream. But let me just tell you something. This, this is already applying to us. Not everyone's ready to hear about your dream. You have a God dream, perhaps. There's something deep in your heart, something you want to do. Not everyone's ready to hear about that. Maybe you've experienced that. You share it, and it's like, ugh, that's dumb. You shouldn't do that. Not everyone's ready for your dream. But I'm just going to move on because i got a lot I need to get to. Verse 6 says this. Uh, Listen to this dream, he said. <laughs> this is so stupid. We were out in the field try, tying up bundles of grain. Suddenly the bundles stood up, and your bundles all gathered around and bowed down before mine. Hey, check it out, guys. I got this dream, and all you guys are bowing down to me up top. It's like, come on, bro. Like, use some common sense. Of course they don't like that dream. Of course that dream is silly. But like many, you know, he didn't, didn't have a filter. He was just going to share the dream right away. He was just going to talk about it. But I think there's a lot to learn from that. And you guys are all bowing down to me. But he got this dream, right? So this was a God dream. This is a real God dream. And this actually ended up happening. But what happened before the dream happened was his brother sold him into slavery. Oops. Okay, they got mad at him enough to where, like, I got, I got picked on a little bit, like, in school. Like, I wasn't always the coolest kid. But I never got sold into slavery, okay? I, it never hit me like that. This guy got it really bad. Sold into slavery, legit. Got sold. He, they threw him down a pit instead of killing him. And then he got picked up, got taken to the house of Potiphar. He was a slave there. Then he went to prison 13 years. 13 years. He had the dream. 13 years goes by, and he's in prison. He's like, uh, hello, Lord, what happened to that dream I had? Okay, something wrong has happened. I think some of you would agree with this statement, this is in your notes. You could write this down just to remember it because I want you to remember these things. Sometimes God gives a dream and it goes into buffering. Is anyone familiar with that term, buffering? It's a no fun term that means it's loading, it's waiting. This series is called refresh, like hitting that refresh button and you gotta have a good connection in order to, you gotta have a right connection to God in order to get the refreshment that you're so desperately seeking for, but sometimes a dream that we have, goals that we have, go into buffering, and they're waiting. Like, I got the dream. Where's the dream? Hello, 13 years in prison. This is not the dream. This is not at all the dream. It's like waking up after a great dream to realize it's not real, except to step, and people expect, man, if I get the dream, if I got this good plan, God shows me something that's really cool, that I'm just going to step into it tomorrow. Cool, right? Wrong. That's not the way it works. Let's actually look at scripture. Other parts of the Bible talk about Joseph. It's really important. That's uh, this right here. Psalm 105 says this. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They hurt his feet with fetters. Those are like shackles. And he was laid in irons until the time that his word, talking about God, his word came to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. Let me read that one more time. Kind of confusing, right? Until the time that his word came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. All right, here comes the teaching moment. There's, there's two words that I want to talk to you about. Two words, word and word. The first word, word, means something different than the second word, word. You tracking with me so far? Word. Just say word. <laughs> word, dog. Okay. The, 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 these, two, these are two different Hebrew words. Words. These are, they're, they're two separate words with two separate meanings. The first, so the first right here, until the time that his word can be passed, that's talking about the dream. That's talking about God's word to Joseph. That's talking about the word that God, it's like a, in a moment of time, God spoke this word and there's going to be a, a dream there. But until that word came to pass, the word, second word, the word of the Lord tested him. The second word is talking about God's ordinance, God's command, like the Bible. Of course, back then there was no Bible it, when Joseph was, was living and active and, and going. The, the Bible was being, being created right then. But until the word, the dream came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. So there was the commandments, still commandments. There's still the ways of the Lord. It was being tested. So let me, let me just say this the way I wrote it. It's, I think it's really important for us to hear this. God has given you a dream. He's given every single one of us a dream. Because in the word, it says God has a plan for you and a purpose for you, not to harm you, but to, to, but to make you prosper, something that you can do. I believe it's true for every single person. 
that if we're submitted to the Lord, if we end up coming to the Lord, not everyone does. If you do, God has a purpose for you. He does. And so God has given you a dream or a word, or he will, or he has, but you haven't heard it, and I want you to hear it. But until it's time for that word or dream to come to pass, the word or God's commandment or the Bible will test you. I've heard it said, like by Christians, they don't understand. Oh, God won't test you. God won't test you. Uh, excuse me, like read the Bible. It says it so many times. It's tempt you're thinking of. God won't tempt you into sin, but he will test your heart. And we're going to talk about this, and it's going to be, I hope, game-changing for you. I hope it's going to be a, a real game changer for you. God will test you to get you ready for what you cannot handle right now. That's called the buffering season. That's the buffering season of, of testing, of, of testing my character, of testing your character, testing your resolve, testing do you continue to show up? Do you continue to, to walk out the commitment that you made to him? Because we've all at certain times, I mean, you're here in church, I'm, I'm assuming a little bit, that at some time in your life you've made a commitment to God. And the word of the Lord is saying right here to us, that word is being, is being fulfilled as you stay committed to that. And the dream is in waiting, watching your commitment. Whew, whew, that's big. That's big right now. It's a buffering season. Some gifts you need to be prepared for. Isn't that right? Like, think about this. There, there's, there's men out there. I don't understand them, but they get their 16-year-old daughter's cars. I, maybe, I mean, it sounds good. It sounds really cool. Maybe it's like a check mark for them. I don't know. Maybe you've done it, and I'm insulting you right now, so that's, sorry about that. But think about this. A 16-year-old girl, never driven, 16-year-old boy, come on, equal opportunity, gets a hot rod for their 16th birthday, no experience. Let me just tell you something. That gift has potential to destroy them because they're not prepared for it. They're, they're the gift that God has for you, the dream God has for you, could potentially harm you if your character isn't ready to carry it. Are you, are you tracking with me? Are you seeing this? That we need to walk this out. We need to walk out our faith a little bit so that the gift that God has for us, so that the calling God has for us doesn't crush us because our character, the foundation of our character can't sustain it. Think, think about it that way. That, that, a, that a 16-year-old girl or boy, I wrote down girl, but I'm thinking like, man, that's so sexist, man, don't do that. Boys can't drive either sometimes, all right? They ain't re- I don't care. If they're 16-year-old, they ain't ready for that Lamborghini. Man, I know some adults that can't handle that much power, all right? Because you haven't trained for it. You haven't trained for it. So listen to this. Listen to this statement. Very important. Write it down if you can, or if you're not taking notes, start writing stuff down right now, okay? Start. When God gives a dream... He also gives a season of preparation. When God gives a dream, he also gives a season of preparation. Every person I can think of from the Bible went through this. Noah had to build a boat. For how long? Years. All right. He's like, hey, check it out. There's going to be this. I had a dream. Years go by and tons of work. Okay. Jeers. Just jeers and jeers and jeers. Moses had to go through two deserts. Come on, this, this fella had it rough, okay? First he gets put in a river and just to die, he finally gets picked up and then he's raised in like wealth, but then he's, he's cast out in the desert and then after all of that, he has to go through testing of going to Pharaoh and whatnot. And then after that, he has to go through the desert for 40 years. This brother had to, years and years and years, he never even saw the promise, but he led all the other people to it, all right? Every dream comes with a season. David, hey, let's talk about King David. All right, King David, he had to slay his giant. But then even after that, even after, even after he was anointed king, he didn't get that fulfillment for years and years and years. He had to actually go in hiding for years. People don't know this. People don't, people, if you haven't read this story yet, I understand. But let me just tell you that King David, the one who wrote the Psalms, the one that, man, he was like one of the all-stars of the faith. He had to go through so much preparation before the fulfillment came to him. Let's talk about Mary, all right? Mary was told by an angel, you're going to give birth to the Messiah. She had to go through a pregnancy. And as soon as she gave birth, she had to go running because the king was killing all babies. Like as soon as the dream comes forth, it seems like. As soon as God gives us a dream, it seems like we go into instant preparation season. Some of you are in a preparation season. You're like, why God? It's because there's a good dream on your life. It's because there's a good purpose for your life, all right? I want you to hold on in the buffering season. 
Write it down. Write it on your, tattoo it on your face. No, I'll just kidding. Don't do that. Don't do that. All right, I got to remember who I'm talking to. Lifeline Church, you might, you might do it. You might do it. Hold on in the buffering. Don't close out that buffering window, that window that's buffering. Don't close it out on that God dream too fast. We have to learn to wait without sin. We have to learn to wait without sinning against God. And, and it's like called holy waiting. I'm calling that holy waiting. Like holy and then holy. Holy waiting. Delay does not mean denial on your dream. I want you to continue to hit refresh, 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 because God is doing something in that season of preparation, in that season of buffering. There's another man in the Bible named Paul, the Apostle Paul. Maybe you've heard of him. He wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. And I can't make this stuff up. I've had people say to me in the church, especially early on, they were like, they didn't, they didn't know, no one preached it to him, I guess, or they didn't read it in the Bible. They're like, oh yeah, as soon as, as soon as he got knocked off his donkey, he was in full-time ministry. And I was like, wait a minute. And I started reading. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. He started to acknowledge God right away, but it says right in the word in Galatians. You can look this up for yourself. He had to spend three years in the Arabian desert. And, and scholars would say that he probably was in seclusion in a cave. So he, he went from saved to caved. Saved to cave. He went to cave college, everybody. He went to cave college. I'm, let me just tell it to you this way. He was prepared in seclusion. He was prepared. He was developed in private. Now, that, that's a word right there. S- some of you with big dreams that might come with platform, you need to know that you're going to be developed in private. If the most, probably the most famous New Testament character, other than Jesus, had to get developed three years in private, then maybe you do too. Maybe, just maybe. And then he wrote this in Romans 5. We also glory in our sufferings. No, we don't. (laughs) Name one person that really does that. Come on. But we should, because Paul knew something that maybe we don't. We glory in our sufferings. Why? Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. And perseverance produces character, and character produces Hope, that's why we can glory in our suffering. It looks like you got to go through something in order to receive all that God has for you. Anybody out there skip a grade? Raise your hand if you ever skipped a grade. Has anyone skipped a grade? Lifeline Church should have known who I was talking to. I really expected at least one person. No one wants to admit it, I bet. No one wants to admit it. It's all right. If you've ever skipped a grade, I, I see you, all right? I acknowledge you. You don't have to say it in front of your friends, but... I never skipped a grade, and I'd probably, if I wasn't working for the church, I'd probably be working for you. I understand that. That's all, I'm good with it. God uses that to humble me all the time. But sometimes a preparation season is a set time. Sometimes it's a set time like, Noah, it's going to flood. All right? I got that, and you need to get this done before it floods. Sometimes a preparation season is a set time. But sometimes the preparation season, the end of it, is dependent on you. It's like skipping a grade. Like whenever you pass the test, whenever your character comes to a place that God needs it to be, that's when you will graduate. Graduate doesn't mean to finish. Like think of graduated cylinder. It's just next steps. It's just to keep going. You graduate from one thing into another thing. God's dream for some of you is waiting for your character to develop. It's waiting for your integrity to come to a place. It's waiting for your dependence on God to come to a place. It's waiting for your faith to come to a place so that that gift, so that that dream doesn't crush you. Sometimes the preparation season is waiting, and that's good news. That means there's something we can do about it, praise God. And a lot of, and a lot of times in church, it's just like, well, you just got to depend on him. Just, you know, turn off your brain and just count on him. But I like times where God is saying, hey, I'm, I'm calling you to do something. I'm calling you to action. I'm calling you to move. And when you get there, I've got something waiting for you. And I feel that a lot of times. I'm sure some of you do too. That when you're developing, that when you're growing, you can see yourself, even in your jobs, this is true. You don't just get the promotion after a certain time. All you people in the union, I don't understand you. But in other jobs, you know, it's when you get to a place, and in the union too, when you get to a place in your skill, when you get to a place in your character, when you get into a place in, in how you interact and how you're able to deal with the job, that's when you move up. And that's what God is saying to some of us today. What I'm saying is if you stay humble, if you grow in your humility, if you are studious, if you are prayerful, if you are grateful, focused on God, you don't have to stay stuck as long. 
That's a good place to say amen. Amen, because you're feeling stuck, but it's up to you. You can get unstuck. You can do this. Focus on your devotion time. Focus on your prayer time. Focus on your integrity. Focus on your honesty in the little things. Watch how it changes your whole life just to return the extra change they accidentally gave you. Little things like that matter because nobody else would know, but God sees it. And God is looking at that heart. It's like, I just got this picture right now. It's like your heart, you know, shaped like that. And it's like there's this light filling up in there. And when we let him in enough, as soon as it gets to a level, we graduate to another place in life. I want that for you. I want that for us. I want that for me. Every single person here on this side of heaven, we all need to work on this. And there was a time where I had really bad internet in my house. My internet was so bad. It was like slowing down so much. I'm trying to look through the internet and it's like going nowhere. So I call AT&T. I got AT&T at my house in Woodbridge. It's all U-verse. Supposed to be fast. Not all the time. So I call AT&T and I'm like, hey, what gives? I pay you all this money. Where's my internet? And the lady on the phone, she was very nice. She's like, well, how many devices do you have connected to it? I'm like, none of your business. <laughs> Should just work. She's like, well, um, I didn't really say that. Come on, guys. Come on. I was just joking. But she asked me how many devices I had. Well, like, just a couple. And then I started thinking, okay, there's two TVs with, with Wi-Fi in them. Okay. And then my wife and I have a phone. And then there's a tablet. And then I have, oh, I have a laptop. My wife has a laptop. Okay. And then, oh, yeah, there's also a desktop computer. And there's also, like, I guess we got a, a, a Wii or a PlayStation that's hooked up. to. And the next thing you know, I'm like, a lot. How many devices? Uh, so many. <laughs> like, well, what you need to do, this is what she told me. What you need to do is disconnect from those things that aren't as important to you. Disconnect from those things that aren't serving you right now and you will see an increase in the things that you need. I was like, honey, preach. Preach to me. Come on, at and lady. She hooked it up right there. That was really good because I got homies too. I got homies that are like really techie and I got, have you ever called your homies for the homie hookup trying to help you? I got homies that would have said, hey man, on my way to your house, man, we'll pick up some Ethernet cables. We'll get up to your attic, man, and we will fix your Internet, bro. I got, I got crazy friends. Let me just put it out there. I got crazy friends. I, if I would have called them, we would have been all spinning in circles, trying to add things, trying to add new things. I got to add something out here. I got to add something over here. I got to do this. got to do that to try and fix it. No, what you need is not to add something. What you need is to probably disconnect from those things that aren't serving you. I don't call Domino's, by the way, when I got internet trouble. I don't call Forever 21 to get that like fast-paced waiting. I don't call them to work on my internet. I need to call the right person. Some of you, we've been calling the wrong people. What we need to do is call on the Lord when we're having issues, when we're having struggles. We don't need to look to the horoscope. All right, we don't need to look to uh, uh, like a fortune teller or whatnot. Why would I ask the stars what I need to do when I can ask the one who created the stars? Come on, somebody. Like, who, why am I asking anybody else about this? Because right here in the word, it says, Jeremiah 33, call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. He says, call to me and I will give you the answers that you're looking for far beyond what you even thought to ask about. Good Lord, that's what I want. Isn't that true for you? Oh, I got another person here. Oh my gosh, here we go. This, is, this one's going to get serious now. This one's going to get a little practical now. There's this second character, this guy with two sisters. Maybe you heard of him. Well, the, he's got two sisters named Mary and Martha. His name, Lazarus. Ever heard of this guy, Lazarus? Uh, he, he the one that died. <laughs> Lazarus the one that died. He actually died twice. He actually died twice. This is the only brother that I know lucky enough to die twice. Like, like I, don't, I don't know if I really want that or not. But listen to this. It says here, right here in John 11, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. <laughs> I was reading this going, what gives, man? Like he loved him so much, he didn't even do nothing. He heard that Lazarus was sick and he like, now nah, I'm good. I love that. I love that, brother. I ain't going to do nothing about it. That's messed up. That is messed up. I don't know. The Bible's funny to me sometimes. I just read it and go, that's, that's weird. But later on, later on in John uh, 11, 11, he was talking, and after he said this, he went on to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. I'm going to go wake him up. 
but uh, I thought he died. But Lazarus died right here. But what Jesus did was he allowed buffering to take place. Jesus allowed buffering to take place. Later on in that same chapter, I'm not going to put it up on the screens because it's a lot. I'm just going to break it down to you in verses 41 through 45. Martha says, you could have saved him. Jesus, what were you doing? Like, why didn't you? You could have saved him. And what she called dead, Jesus called sleeping. Sometimes what we call dead, Jesus said, no, that's just sleeping. No, my dream, Lord, is dead. No, it's just sleeping. My calling has, is dead. No, it's just sleeping. I'm going to wake it up. I'm going to wake it up here sometime soon. And I see Lazarus come bouncing out of that grave all wrapped up like this. He's like bouncing out of here like this. See Lazarus all wrapped up in like a, coming out like a mummy, just like a fish flopping around like, oh, come out. Even Lazarus had to do something about the miracle though. He had to do something like he was wrapped up. Like that's probably how he did it. <gasps> Picture that, man. Next time you're reading that chapter, Picture that. He came, he came hopping out of that grave. Songs I sing, you know, in Bible, Bible song, they're like, came running out of that grave, came hopping out of that grave like a, like a fish on a rope, man. It's crazy. Lazarus come out. How about faith come out? Does somebody need their faith to get woke up today? Does somebody need their peace to get woken up today? Does someone need their dreams to get woken up today? I believe God wants to do it for you today, January 8th, 2023. It's going to happen. If you would just receive it, if you would just say, all right, Lord, it's not dead. I'm not dead. I'm not done. Dreams. That's what we're talking about today. So there's a tension between today and tomorrow. And I get that. I get that. Like the, the dream is in the future, but what does that mean for today? So write this down. This is very, very important when it comes to your dreams, because dreams are very abstract sometimes. It's like, it's like an art piece that you can't see. It's, I, I don't understand how I'm going to get there. Listen to this. A dream without a plan is just a wish. A dream without a plan is just a wish. We actually talk to our leaders about this on a regular basis. We have this thing called goal planning, quarterly goal planning, and it says it right there in the outline. A wish is like, man, I wish I read my Bible more. But a goal or a plan is I'm going to read my Bible at 6.15 a.m., for 20 minutes. Do you see the difference between, man, I, I really should read my Bible sometime more. All right, see y'all later. Man, I really would love to pray more. All right, man, maybe, maybe it'll happen. No, uh, a dream without a plan is just a wish, and we don't have wishes, man. We have goals. We have things that we want to do, and don't be a daydreamer. Don't be a daydreamer. Dreaming all the time and never doing much about it, that's why our habits mean so much to us. I bet some of you are wondering, man, it's the beginning of the year. When are you going to start talking about habits? Uh, today, right now. Today, we are what we repeatedly do. Now, I told you it's about to get practical here. It's about to get practical, and I'm going to break it down to you from the word. Now is the time to develop great habits. And you've, Have you ever been called on a school? Uh, uh, the school questions, man, they just keep coming. Called on a school and you did not have no clue what to say because why? You were daydreaming. That, no one else here, y'all are responsible. But me in school, I was a train wreck, okay? I was, I was either telling jokes or not paying attention. Both of them are not paying attention. I, I did not do well in school at all, by the way. God needs you to be present today so that he could take you where he wants you tomorrow. In your marriage, in your business, in the non nonprofit that you want to start, he needs you present today. Don't be a daydreamer. Be a planner. Be someone who's going to actually do something about that dream God has given you. You need to do four things. I'm going to try to hurry through these. Number one, decide what's really important. Write this down, please. Des you got to decide what's really important. You have to focus on what's truly, truly important to you. Listen to Philippians 3. This is Paul writing. He said, I once thought all these other things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when it's compared to the infinite value of knowing Christ. That's the most important thing is what Paul is saying. I don't care about anything else. I just want to know him, my Lord. For his sake, I've discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage so that I could gain Christ. We talked about this a lot last week. Focus on God. Everything else is going to come into place. Focus on God and everything else will come into place. You need to decide, and you're the one that needs to choose this. I can't choose it for you. Your spouse can't choose it for you. Your friends can't choose it for you. You need to decide what's important to me. What's most important to me? 
You've got to set your priorities around godly things and watch God transform the entirety of your life and sanctify your dreams. Make holy. Sanctify means to make holy. God will sanctify your dreams. Make them holy as we're dependent on him. I want you to focus on what's most important. Now, this next one right here, I had to change it. I changed it yesterday because I had something I was thinking about, and I'm like, man, it's not quite right. But it's in your notes one way because we get ready early. So I'm going to have you write down what I wrote for your paper, but then I'm going to have you edit it. Does that sound good? All right, you can handle that. Number two is this. Give calendar time to what's most important. But what I want you to do is in parentheses right next to that, I want you to write invest in. Invest because it's more than just your calendar. It's more than just your calendar. When I think about it, I think it's mainly two things. It's your time and your money. It's in, it's, that's, that's the fullness of investment. When, I, when someone says to me that they really care about something, I'll listen to them. But I'll tell you this, and you all know this is true. Show me your calendar. Show me your bank account. I'll tell you what you care about. Show me, like, not what your calendar says, like where you actually spent your time, who you spent your time with, what you spent your time doing. And show me that ledger. Show me where that money's really going. Show me those things, and I'll, and I'll show you. You may not even realize it, and many of us don't because we're experts at self-deception. We say we care about things, but if we actually looked at how we're spending our time and how we're spending our money, that would say something totally different. So my, my second point is after you decide what's important, I want you to decide to invest there. I want you to invest your time there. I want you to invest your money in growing in the Lord. Like These are tangible things. These are things that all of us need to do need to do listen to psalm 90 verse 12 it says teach us to number our days like man i could preach on budgeting right now for an hour but i don't have that kind of time teach us to number our days to recognize how few they are and help us to spend them as we should look at your resources the, the main way to consider resources is is time and money those are the resources that you have where are you investing those after you decide what's important i want you to decide and that's where i'm going to invest like I was talking to a brother recently, like, man, I'm trying to look for a Bible, you know, whatever, and I, I sent it over, like, hey, check this one out, and it's like 50 bucks, this Bible right here, and he said, that's, I got it, I'm doing it, and, and I, saw, I knew inside of him, I'm like, all right, that's, that's what I want to see, that's what I want to see right there, because someone who's willing to invest, say, you know what, I want a good one, and I want to invest in it, and not just do the cheapest or quickest way, like the quickest prayer I can do, or the quickest Bible reading I can do, or the cheapest Bible I can have, or the smallest investment I can do to just get by and make people think. No, 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 no. If you care about something, invest in it and watch it grow. Invest in it and watch it grow. Don't become, I'm not saying to become a slave to your calendar or your money either. Those things should be slaves to you. Your, your time and your money should be a slave to you. Make it serve you. Make it serve the things that are important to you. So we've, we've uh, focused on, we decided what's really important and we're investing in it. And the third thing is, it's kind of funny, we need to eliminate what's not important. Because the things that are not important, if, if not eliminated, will choke out and crowd out the things that are important to you. Watch this. Unimportant things always have a tendency to steal the show. Always. Can anyone say TikTok? Can anyone say social media, whatever it is next year? You know what I'm saying? Like unimportant things because they're easy. And typically our dreams and the things that are important to us, like our marriage, like our relationships, like, like our jobs, these things take work and discipline. But it's the unimportant things like watching TV or, or being on social media, those are easy. And they just have a tendency to, that's why you have to eliminate them. You have to eliminate these things. We've got to get that junk out of there. Listen to Hebrews 12. It says, therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders it and the sin that so easily, so easily entangles. The Bible's giving us some wisdom here. Sin knows how to just work its way into our lives. It's very easy for it to happen. That's why we have to be sharp. That's why we have to stay focused, showing up to church every week, being, being sure that we're in the word every day, staying in prayer every day, because that sin so in, easily entangles. It's important. Anybody who's ever been on one side and the other knows, knows the difference between protecting themselves and not. So, and let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us. Uh, I got a little plug here. I use an app on my phone called Freedom. I use it on my 
desktop. It's like a little green logo. It's like with a little logo of a butterfly. I, I'm not sponsored by them. Okay? I'm just, I just use it. I just use it. And what, all it does is I, I, I tell it when I want to be able to use like social media or anything on my phone. And then like it just stops me from, from using it. I mean, I can circumvent it, but like honestly, like that's enough for me to like when I'm standing in the grocery line, you know, and the habit is to uh, just go like this. What, it, what it'll do is funny. It'll, it'll, it'll open up and then close again, and it'll have a little notification bar. It says, application blocked. Go do great things. <laughs> That's what it says. <laughs> it's really cool. Like, and it's like $2 for a year or something. It's like almost free. But things like that. Eliminate. Don't just hope it goes away. Eliminate it. You eliminate it. Eliminate. Well, there's some apps you don't need at all on your phone. Some of you don't even need a smartphone. <laughs> it's true. It's true. For a certain season, maybe just a flip phone will do. It doesn't matter. Like, who cares? I mean, if you're serious and you know it's a thing, get rid of it. This year's the year. This year's the year. If you want great things, I'm just telling you, this is what we got to do. And I believe great things are coming for you. But I got to keep going. Number four is this, constantly evaluate, constantly evaluate, because many of us last year, we decided to do the same thing. January of 2022, we were like, oh yeah, new year, new me, and we did good for a little while. We did good, but priorities have a way of wiggling out of place. It's, it's just true. It's just the way it is, because those unimportant things, they just creep back in, and priorities wiggle out of place. We got to keep them there. I was told this early on in my salvation, early on in my faith, I was taught this. Every great leader has regular seasons of renewal. Every great leader. And I don't know why, but that really stuck with me. That really hit me. And I've, I've endeavored to like every time I realize I need it, I'll refocus on my life. I'll look at my life again and I'll say, am I really prioritizing my wife? Am I really prioritizing my family? Am I really prioritizing the church? Am I really... We have to do that on a regular basis. Constantly evaluate as, because priorities wiggle. Come on, somebody. They wiggle. They wiggle out of place because last year we did this and here we are again, ready to do it again. I'm going to put you first again. But now I want to put the ball in your court and say, I can do this every month. I can do this every couple weeks. I can do this whenever I need to. I can reset and I can put God first. Psalm 39 goes like this. Lord, Remind me of how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered, how fleeting my life is. You have made my life no longer than the width of my hand. My entire lifetime is just a moment to you. At best, each of us is just a breath. We've got to focus. This third guy, last guy, last guy, his, his name was uh, Abraham. Abraham, another Old Testament figure but really, really important because this guy, he made some mistakes. Uh, Abraham made a lot of mistakes, actually. They don't get highlighted as much, but he did. He, he really struggled trusting God, and he stepped outside of God's will for him. He lied. He, he, he slept with someone, not his wife, by his wife's recommendation. Really crazy. <laughs> she was like, Hey, because they were promised a son. They were promised an heir. And they were promised a family. And it wasn't happening. And his wife was like, why don't you go sleep with uh, the maid, our maidservant? He was like, all right. <laughs> I don't know, man. He's just like, no hesitation is recorded in the Bible. He's just like, oh, well, if you say so, I, I guess I will. He made some mistakes. And that was a mistake. Even God said it was a mistake. He had a, he had a child named Ishmael through that. And that was not the promise. And that was not the promise. He went, he went outside of God's plan to do things his own way, to try and fulfill the God dream through his own power. That's, that's really what it was, through his own insight, through his own ability. And then this is what is recorded in Genesis 15. The Lord said to him, no, your servant will not be your heir. You will have a son of your own who will be your heir. And then the Lord took Abram, before his name was Abraham, took Abram outside and said to him, look up to the sky and count the stars if you can and see how many descendants you will have there. And Abram believed the Lord. Sometimes we just have to grow our faith a little bit. 
to actually believe God's word is true. And if we do it his way, he'll come through for us. I think a lot of the things that we struggle with in life boil down to an element of not trusting. Like we don't, we, we can't trust God with our finances because we believe if we do that, we won't be taken care of. Or we go outside of God's plan to sleep with whoever because we think we need to lock in that relationship because we don't believe God can supply us with a good spouse. I, I think it boils down to many of the things we struggle with, not trusting God to do what he said he would do and to take care of you in a way that you're okay with. But Abram trusted God. He believed him. And God said, that's the righteousness I'm looking for. Someone who would believe in me. Someone who will believe I'll do what I said I would do. God has sons and daughters all over this room right now. And I believe he's looking at every single one of your hearts. Every, like I just would hope that you would picture this with emotion in his eyes. He's looking at his sons and daughters saying, I wish you would come believe me. Believe me, I want what's best for you. Believe me, I want to take care of you. Believe me, I want that dream to come to pass more than you do. Would you just believe me? Would you trust me? Would you come to me? There's going to be an opportunity for you today to put your faith in Jesus, to put your trust and hope in God. And I hope you take it. I hope you take it. But I'm going to go off the flow for a second here. And instead of praying salvation prayer right now, we'll do it in a minute. I want to talk to you about something else before we go because some things in your life take extra umph. Some things in life take extra strength, stain remover or whatever. Like it takes a little bit more than just a little bit of faith to come through. I'm talking about prayer and fasting. We're starting prayer and fasting as a church tonight at sundown or tomorrow, whenever you want to look at that. And I want to talk to you about this because a lot of, a lot of places, a lot of churches, a lot of people don't know what prayer and fasting is all about. Don't know what prayer and fasting means. We ask God to speak to us. With, God, help me out. Uh, would you help? Would you speak to me? And he says, okay, uh, let me tell you. And you're like, what? Huh? I can't hear you, God. What are you saying? I got Hollywood screaming in my ear. I got Spotify screaming in my ear. I got everything else in the whole world choking out my life, and I cannot hear God. And God is like screaming at us, but we're so convoluted in our soul, we can't hear him. That's what fasting is all about, is, is cleansing ourselves out. Listen to this, Matthew 17. The disciples came to Jesus privately because they tried to cast out a demon. They tried to do, they tried to get some breakthrough and they couldn't do it. They said, why could we not cast it out? How come we couldn't see that breakthrough? Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go out but by prayer and fasting. And fasting is a huge part of the New Testament expression of the Christian faith. Fasting is seen throughout, and we hardly ever do it. We hardly ever engage in that because, frankly, people, we don't want to give stuff up. And it sounds hard. I don't want to do hard stuff. I just want to show up and everything will work out. I know. I know. I feel that way too sometimes. We all know. We all know what's up. We all know things that are worth fighting for are the real things worth having. Let me talk to you about this. This is on your second page, all right? And we're almost done, I promise. Prayer connects us to God. Okay, that's what prayer means. This is a season of prayer and fasting. It's going to last for 21 days. And prayer connects us to God. It's just talking to God. I release you from having to pray like you're in the King James Bible. Oh, Lord, I beseech thee, oh, Father of life. It's like you don't have to light the incense and get down, you know, on one knee and get all weird about it. Like, just talk to God. Just talk to him. Talking to God is prayer. Speaking to him. That connects us to God. Prayer. Fasting, second blank, disconnects us from the world. That's what fasting does. Because we can talk to God till we're blue in the face, but if our if our soul is convoluted with all these things, we won't be able to hear properly. Let me just tell you the truth about something. Every time I go through a really, really tough season in life and, and it happens where really hard things are happening, I will impromptu start fasting 
and I will inevitably see breakthrough in that area. Fasting disconnects us from the world. This is a secret sauce of sorts. Starting tomorrow, I want to invite you to do this with us. This is not a cleanse. This is not a diet. Okay? This is fasting. And we're fasting because we know as a church, as leadership, we know we're coming into a really serious season, a really great season for our church, seeing people getting saved, seeing, seeing people who have been struggling for years get breakthrough and go all in for Jesus. This is coming. And we want to be ready for it spiritually. So we want to pray this season in and we want to fast this season in. And that, that applies to you. This is a season for you. I want to talk to you about four ways you can fast with us, okay? Starting with the most serious way. The most serious way is called a complete fast. Like, I've done this a few times. Maybe somebody, maybe your grandma did this once. I don't, it's when you give up everything and do liquids only. I ne- I've never done it for 21 days. I've done it for seven days, which is crazy to me that I even did that once. But more often, I'll do it for a couple days or two or three days, and I'll just drink water and coffee, and that's it, liquid only. A complete, and you got to check with your doctor about this stuff, okay? If, if you've got, like, any kind of diabetes or blood sugar issues, just... Be, be safe and smart, okay, everybody? But a complete fast, you drink only liquids, uh, typically water with light juices as an option. You could do juicing. That would be another way. All right, these are kinds of fasts seen in the Bible, all right? And then the next one is called a selective fast. So listen to this one. This type of fast inv- involves removing certain kinds of foods from your diet. One example of a selective ba- fast would be the Daniel fast where they came to him and said, hey, you're going to eat all the king's meat. And he's like, no, I don't need any meats. I don't need any sweets. I don't need any dairies. I don't need any bread. And I'm just going to do that. Uh, so maybe you could just take some things out of your diet and, and something that you normally would eat, right? You'd be like, I'm not going to eat Brussels sprouts. You know, you can do, you can give up whatever you want, you know, but make it something that's like, you know, something so you can feel it. You, know, you want to be able to feel this. You want to be able to take something out and say this, I'm going to give this up for the Lord for 21 days. Maybe a partial fast also known as the Jewish fast, where you give up during a certain time of day, like in between, like maybe sun up to sundown, you, uh, you don't eat. Or maybe, maybe you're going to give up lunch would be a variation of that. Tiffany did that before she hit the mission field as a young lady. Uh, she gave up all of her lunches, and girl likes to snack, okay? And so giving up one meal like that, she's a skinny girl, but like, hey, she gave up that meal and gave herself to the Lord in prayer over her lunch break, for a season, and then she went as a missionary for a season of time in Spain, and it was a very serious time. So getting ready for good seasons, you can do this. And then if food is not on the option, if, if food is not an option for you, if you just health-wise or whatever, most fasts, any fast you see in the Bible is going to be food-related. But this might be a good one if you're brand new and you're not considering doing that. It's called the soul fast. Soul fast. This is something I heard about, and I, I really just adopted it for us. I said, hey, this might be a really good option for us as a church. This fast um, includes giving up something from your soul. Like you want to refocus certain areas of your life that are out of balance. Like, for example, you might choose to stop using social media for the 21 days or stop watching the news for 21 days or something like that, some kind of music might just only worship music for 21 days. Some kind of fast of intake into your eyes or your ears. Think about it that way. Some of you are like, heart is pounding thinking about giving up Instagram for 21 days. But that's, your, 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 your soul is going, <coughs> I can't breathe. <coughs> because it's choking with all that social media that you got. So maybe it's a good idea for you. But for this fast, it's going to start. I, w- I want you to join us in this. I know I took a little extra time today because this is a beginning of a really really exciting season for us as a church. All right, so get excited about it. And the last little blank, I don't even think it's on there. Yeah, it is. Have high expectations. Have high expectations. Know that this is not just going to be something that you do randomly that is like, all right, I'm going to do some church thing. No, 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 no. God is going to move in your life. Believe that. God is going to move. If you would have the faith to say, all right, God, I'm going to give up something in my life and I'm going to choose to trust you for this 21 days and I'm going to replace what I gave up with prayer time. I want you to have high expectation that God is going to meet you and do something brand new in your life that he's never done before. Amen, everybody? I want to give you an opportunity right now to have that kind of faith, to take a kind of step like that. So I want you all to bow your heads and close your eyes with me. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for every person here who's about to embark in a new season in life. 
Maybe it's fasting. Maybe it's this season of prayer. Maybe it's one of these application steps that, that these folks here listening online or, or right here in the building, they're going to take a new step of faith in you. Lord, I pray that you bless them. I pray that you lift them up in the midst of everything that they're about to do and walk in. But Lord, I also pray over every person who's about to take a first step in their faith to say, Jesus, I didn't even, I, I've never really even walked with you. I've heard about you. I've been around, but I have never really taken that full step of faith. And that's the first step, everybody. That's the first step. Maybe some of you today, it's time to take the most important step you could possibly take to make Jesus the Lord of your life or maybe to make him the Lord of your life again. Maybe some of you, it's time to come back to that. So if that's you today, if you're ready to take a step of any kind today, I just want to include everybody in this one. If you're ready to take a next step today, would you lift your hand up for me? So let me see you. Come on, let me see you. Everybody in this place, come on. Hands all across this room. We're going to take some next steps today in Jesus' name. Church, would you pray aloud with me? I'm going to pray. I hope you would repeat it right after me and make it for you. Say, Father God, I give you my heart. I give you my life. Fill me with your spirit. Make me new. Forgive me of my sin. And show me the path that I should walk. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we celebrate everyone who made a first step today? Amen. God is good.